from the UCKG Macau to the world. The journey of faith of the holy campaign of revolt on Mount Sinai. Hello everyone, we are here today to give continuity to the journey of faith. And this is important to be explained right in the beginning of today's program, that the journey of faith is a program that is being done every single day from Monday to Friday in order to strengthen, to guide those that are seeking, that are searching a transformation in their lives that, of course, is only achievable through the Holy Spirit. But it's important to remember that every program that is being done, it is connected to one another. Because the prayer that is being done, the Bible verses that is being taught each and every day, it is each and every one of them a very important piece for you to remain yourself, as we spoke yesterday, at the mountain to remain yourself connected to God. Because as we spoke, what God wants to do in your life, it is something tremendous. It is something great, something that words won't be able to describe because of how great it is. But in order for you to remain as we were speaking, it is necessary for you to have inside of you the revolt. Because revolt cannot be something that is temporary. It needs to be constant. Because there are many people, Pastor Roni, that they confuse things. They think that revolt is just a simple emotion, a simple spawn of the moment that they have that moment that they want. Ah, I want to change my life and that's it. It's over. But it's not like that. When someone is truly revolted inside of her, there is a true revolt. She won't stop seeking until she reaches where she needs to reach. In this case, is of course receiving the promised presence. And this is what we want to awaken inside of this person. That she needs to remain revolted. That she needs to remain in the same faith. The faith that she has cannot be a faith that is inconsistent. Of course, you're going to have difficulties, you're going to have struggles, but in spite of the struggles, in spite of the difficulties, your faith needs to remain the same. And how do you remain the same? Through the revolt, to revolt yourself against the situation. Because when a person is revolted, she be severe. She keep moving forward towards the target that she wants to active. This person that is not yet perhaps baptized with the Holy Spirit, what she have to do? Keep these revolts inside of her and also persevering. She cannot give up. She cannot say, okay, I have prayed, I have done my part, and until now I have not yet received the Holy Spirit, so it's okay, I will accept. No, she has to keep these revoltings and perseverance inside of her moving forward toward the target. And the target here, it is the presence of God inside of us. Because just as we are talking about throughout the programs, the promised lands, the blessings, the life transformation that we want only comes after we have the promised presence inside of us. Exactly. And to receive this promised presence, there needs to be revolt. There needs to be inside of you the revolt. Because if there is no revolt, you won't be able to withstand the difficulties. So you need to revolt yourself. And keep in mind, once again, it's important to remember, we are not talking about religion. We are not talking about that. We are not talking about you having a big faith, a, gi a gigantic faith. No. We are talking about you having inside of you the revolt. To, perse to persevere, to keep on fighting, to remain yourself connected to God at all moments so that He can come to you. 
That is what you need to do. And once you understand that and apply that, and you carry inside of you the revolt, that is what will bring to you the Holy Spirit. Because there are many people that, like you in this moment, are connected in the journey of faith. There are those that are attending in the church, and they also want to receive the Holy Spirit. But what differentiates one person to the other? What's the difference between those that are praying and you? Why should God pick you? Because inside of you, you carry this revolt. Because if this person doesn't carry the revolt, she won't be able to withstand. She won't be able to continue. She won't be able. She needs to be revolted. She needs to be decided, truly decided, of what she wants. That is why in this week of Mount Sinai, instead of us backing off in our faith, on the contrary, we're still moving forward. On the Sunday meeting that we had here in our UCKG in Macau, we had the conclusion of the fast of Daniel. But even so, we continue to seek the Holy Spirit because the fast of Daniel, indeed, it has concluded on the Sunday meeting that we had. But the faith remains the same. The revolt remains the same. We continue to seek God no matter what, pushing forward because His promised presence is yet to come upon your life. That is what we believe, Pastor Ron. And this is the difference that God is looking for between those who are really revolted to those who are really complacent, those who accept the situation. If you keep this fire on inside of you, this revolt is inside of you, and keep yourself in the mountain, you will see that the year of 2023 will not end the same. Perhaps this person throughout the whole year, Pastor Rodrigo, the year for her was not so good. She faced a lot of, you know, problem. She went through a lot of trials. She went through a lot of difficulties. But what happened, happened. Focus now. We still have a few days before the end of the year. If you keep yourself in the mouth and this revolt is inside of you and do not give up, persevere, insist, you will see that this year of 2023 will not end without you receive the promised presence. And remember that God is with you. She is not alone. Yeah. Understand, you are not alone. God is with you. Perhaps everyone has given up on you, but God has not given up. You need to persevere. Keep using your faith. Let me share with you this Bible verse here in the book of Isaiah, chapter 57, on verse 15. Isaiah 57, 15. For thus says the high and lofty one who inhabits eternity, whose name is holy, I dwell in the high and holy place with him who has a contrite and humble spirit to revive the spirit of the humble and to revive the heart of the contrite ones. So God is with you. You are not alone. Keep yourself in faith. But pastor, my situation is hard. Perfect. Because even so the situation is hard, God is with you even more, even more to strengthen you. For you to understand, let us watch this testimony. And let us see, let us see how can a person revolted and through the faith in God be able to change her life completely. Okay, so let us watch this testimony, and after that, we will come back. The lowest point in my life was when I got arrested, and when I came out of the police cell, um, I had a conversation with my mum, and she asked me never to call her mum again. My life was pretty much a roller coaster growing up. Um, I grew up from as, young, from as young as I can remember. I was just terrified of the dark. Um, I couldn't sleep at night. I was terrified of being alone. Um, I used to hear voices, I used to see shadows. 
uh, in my room. I used to see my bed covers moving off my body. Uh, I used to wake up with bruises on my neck, scratches on my fingertips. At home, um, my dad was a very much a disciplinarian. And so with that being said, he was very strict when it came to education, when it came to school, learning. And I was very much the opposite. I didn't like any of that stuff simply because he liked it. Um, I remember um, sometimes when I would come home, I would bring homework from school. It was awful because I knew I couldn't do the homework. I didn't understand what the homework was requiring me for me to do. And so because of that, um, my dad would hit me all the time. Um, he was borderline abusive and I would just get beaten. Um, I didn't understand why I was getting beaten. I didn't understand the question. It was just all confusing to me. But then I would see um, the treatment of my sister who you know, was very, very good academically. She would get lots of love, lots of attention and lots of uh, sort of care uh, in terms of trying to you know, figure out the answer for certain questions in, in her homework. So. With that being said, um, when I went to school, I was very much different. I was always trying to seek for attention, the attention that I obviously didn't get at home. I was always the class clown. I was always trying to, you know, muck about, make everyone laugh. Um, I never took education seriously. So because of that, I didn't really leave school with anything to sort of, you know, uh, be proud of, really. At the age of 14 um, is when I um, actually made the transition from living with my dad to live with my mum. The relationship between me and my dad was very, very bad. It was awful. I actually made the choice to, to move into my mum's house. At that point, um, because my dad was very, very tough, he was very strict with rules um, and discipline, but my mum was the complete opposite. She was very soft. And so I took that as an opportunity to be a bit more rebellious um, at school and obviously on the streets as well. Around about the age of 16, um, that's when I started um, really deep diving into um, rebellious behavior, antisocial behavior, and that's obviously when I joined a gang. We used to steal lots of different things, different phones, different, you know, value items, basically. We always had a target. So um, I remember one particular time when um, it was actually after an exam, after my GCSE exam, and I knew I had failed. There was just no point in me sort of trying to, you know, cover that up. Uh, and so a friend invited me for us to go out on um, something called Eats. So basically we used to go out and basically steal phones, etc. And we took his dog and um, that was the day I actually ended up getting arrested. And I went to the police cell and I was there for at least 12 hours. Um, I was just thinking about everything that was, you know, everything that I had done, um, the people that I had hurt. I remember going home and I had a conversation with my mum. I was saying, look, mum, can you just, um, and she stopped me halfway through the conversation. She said, look, from now on, I never ever want you to call me mum. Never in your life call me mum. I just remember feeling so heartbroken. And this was the first time I'd actually sort of thought about how much my behavior had impacted her because our relationship was quite good. Um, and I just remember walking into my room, falling to my knees and just bursting out crying. I was, I was so heartbroken that I had pushed my mum to that limit. And so from that point, even though it was such a heartbreaking moment, it still didn't change me. So at the age of 18, um, my life was at a point where I had to make a decision on what I really wanted. My life was obviously going downhill. Um, the friends that I was hanging around with were obviously not a good influence. The path in which I was taking was very, very destructive. And at this point, um, I had a conversation with my mum who saw how bad the situation was. So she actually invited me to the Universal Church. That's when I started taking things a lot more seriously. So as years went by and I was in the church, um, I'd seen lots of different things happen in my life. I achieved lots of different goals, which was great. But the one thing that I still lacked was the life transformation of the Holy Spirit. And that was something that I still really needed in order for my life transformation to be complete. Um, at the time, I had met my wife um, and we had both experienced great changes within our life. And when we first met, there was no instant attraction because we were just focused on what we wanted to do. We always wanted to be the best version of ourselves. The moment where I started to notice Oliver was when I was at a moment in my life was, which was quite difficult. Um, so he was the person who actually brought me back to the church because Fast forward and I left the church um, and when I left he was a person that was still contacting me and trying to get me to come back to the church. Even though we had achieved quite a lot of um, you know blessings etc 
we both saw the need for us to seek for the Holy Spirit and to really truly be transformed from the inside within our character and our behavior. When it came to the point of taking part in the campaign of faith, I remember being so revolted that I wanted this life transformation to really happen. I wanted the Holy Spirit so desperately. And I remember I watched the testimony of a lady from Brazil actually, and she said that she wanted the Holy Spirit so badly that she told the Holy Spirit that if she didn't receive him, then she just wanted to die. And I went in that same spirit, I went in that same faith. I said to God, look, I'm giving you 21 days to change my life. If I don't receive the Holy Spirit by the 22nd day, I want you to kill me. And at the time, um, I wanted to truly show God how desperately, how much I truly wanted him. So at that point, I put everything on the altar. I put absolutely everything because I wanted to show God that I was serious about the decision that I had made to truly receive him. It was me constantly trying my best to always do everything that I could to please him. And then at the end of that campaign of faith, I remember receiving the Holy Spirit. And when I did, it was a day that I would never ever forget. After receiving the Holy Spirit, all of us, as I said, is a different person. Um, and now we both have the Holy Spirit. We're both able to give because before we couldn't give because we had nothing to give. So now we're able to give and we give with joy. I remember it was when I placed my sacrifice on the altar, it was like God was confirming that everything that I had thought about, everything that I had determined with him in secret was being rewarded openly. So my life today is, I would say, picture perfect uh, in every single way, because not only do I have peace inside of me, not only am I content with myself, I don't need to sort of force a persona to sort of be the loudest person in the room to be noticed. I've got a great career within the recruitment sector. Um, I work for a great company, I'm happily married. When it comes to the relationship with my dad, um, I actually don't have any sort of animosity, any sort of anger, grudges towards him whatsoever. We actually have quite a great relationship now. Today, my wife and I are both a part of a community group where we help young people who are pretty much, or who were pretty much, in the same situation um, as we were when we were younger. We help them, you know, with singing, dancing, acting, and, you know, we, we give them advice and tips, you know, biblically based. Um, advice. We're giving a bit of us that God has given to us, so we're giving to these teens what we've received. So this chance to also receive the Holy Spirit, this chance to also get to know God, we're also being in that position to, to give to them. I have joy, I have happiness. Um, the, the, the clear difference between the person that I was before and the person that I am today is the sincerity before God. Everything that I have is simply because I am sincere before God at all times. If I made a mistake in the past, it was something that I would try to hide from God. I was, it was something that I would try to hide away from people because I didn't want to be embarrassed. I didn't want to feel as if like I was the only person that was going through it. But now I can be completely transparent because there's nothing to hide. And sincerity is a huge thing when it comes to God. Everything that I have is simply because um, I have the Holy Spirit and I wouldn't have anything I have if it wasn't for the Holy Spirit. You saw how this man was able to call the attention of the Holy Spirit. He went to the altar, revolted, and he remained there. And he said, I won't leave until the Holy Spirit comes to me. That is the faith that you need to have. That's the spirit that you need to have. That's what we need to have. We need to be revolted, decided, because that is what calls the attention of God into your life. So remember this, keep this in mind. There are many people praying with you. And who will receive the Holy Spirit? All of those that have the same revolt inside of them. No matter the situation, no matter the difficulties, no matter the struggles. If you keep yourself in faith, 
with this revolt inside of you, ignited at all power, at all strength, God will come to you. So that is why in this week, continue to use your faith. Continue to pray. As a matter of fact, Pastor Roni, it is not even about continuing to pray. It's to pray even more. It's to fast even more. It is to use your faith even more. Because day by day, the revolt of someone that is revolted, it increases even more. Moses said to God, if your presence doesn't go with us, it is better for us not to leave this, this place. When we read the Bible, we read the Bible and we talk on this way. But I believe, Pastor Rodrigo, that Moses, he was so revolted that the sound of his voice was not just like I mentioned here. If your presence doesn't go with us, let us not leave this place. I believe that he even, you know, he expressed himself with boldness. My God, if your presence don't go with us, so do not allow us. Not angry, but with revolt inside of him. And this is what this person has to do. Sometimes the person, you know, she is even f f afraid <laughs> of talking to God on this way because she thinks I'm blaspheming against God. No. No. When you use your faith with boldness, with this revolt inside of you, this is when you call the attention of God. Yeah, because there's a difference between anger and revolt. We're not here saying that you need to be angry. It's not anger. It is different. A anger, it is something temporary that comes and goes. But revolt, it is different. It goes deeper. And talking about Moses, Moses even said, he even says to erase me, to blot me out of your books, of your book, to blot him out, to erase him if his presence did not go with him. So that is how decided Moses was. And that is how decided this man in the testimony was. And that is how you should be, my friend, in this moment. Use your faith. Use your faith right now. And the Lord will come to you. It is a matter of time. It is a matter of time. If you believe and persevere in this faith, God will come to you no matter what. It is not a matter of, for example, say, but pastor... I am not worthy. No one is talking about being worthy. If we are going to talk about being worthy, who will be worthy? It is a matter of being revolting, my friends, of applying what God is teaching you through His words. If you believe, if you surrender, if you place yourself in God's hand, He will come to you. He will come to you. That's what He is looking for. That is why the Bible also says, and by the way, we spoke about that here in our UCKG in Macau, that God was glad. He was glad by the words of Moses. He was not mad. He was not angry at Moses for saying what he said. No, he was glad. So the same way God will be glad that you, my friend, are showing this determination to receive the Holy Spirit, to receive the promised presence in your life and of course through the promised presence many areas of your life all areas of your life uh, will be transformed but remember this focus first on the promised presence so let us make this powerful prayer in this moment for you so that spiritually you keep you can be empowered right now okay so let us pray let us unite our strength right now so that you can keep yourself in faith to awaken this revolt in you and to maintain it because there is where the answer will come to you so pastor roni let us pray and then after that i will give continuity to the prayer please close your eyes holy spirit my god and my father that is our faith we do not accept my god to believe in a great god the creator of heaven and earth and my God, see the life of those who believe in you, my God, living like a hell, a piece of hell, full of problems, full of oppression, depression, sickness, infirmity. My God, we do not accept that. We are revolted, my God, for this situation that your people are going through. 
But my Lord, it's not enough for us pastors to be revolted about the situation that this person is going through if this person does not be revolted as well, my God. Because yes, for sure you hear, you listen, and you are ready to answer to our prayer. But indeed, this person has to be revolted also. This person has to determine. This person has to charge her faith. And that's the special moment that we are living in the whole world that we challenge our faith on the altar, my God. Awake this person's faith and let her understand that her life only will be completely transformed when she gets revolted against the situation and bring this case to the altar, which is the mountain where she can find you. And once she finds you, she has the promised presence, she will also have, my God, access to the promised lands that is what we pray here in jesus christ's name it is what we pray my lord because this person needs to have inside of her this revolt of course my lord we've seen especially this last sunday many people my lord having an encounter with you but lord even though many people have encountered you on this sunday that was something already very marvelous very tremendous my lord there are so many yet to know you to receive you lord so awaken in those my lord that still need to be awakened this revolt in the same way that we saw my lord in moses and we saw in this testimony this is what we need to have my lord this is what this person needs to have right now so my lord visit them in this moment you my lord that lives, that resides, my Lord, that abides in the holy and high places. Come, my Lord, to them in this moment of prayer. Come, my Lord, and visit them no matter where they are, no matter the situation that they're living in this moment. This person that is hanging by a thread, this person, my Lord, that is inside of the hospital, that is inside of her house, my Lord, without knowing what to do, with no hope at all, that she had shattered my lord inside broken destroyed but visit her in this moment and strengthen her now give to her my lord what she needs to be able to rise against the situation my lord and to be revolted so that she can be able to seek you no matter what it is what i determined by faith the same revolt my lord that we have inside of us because there is a revolt, my Lord, inside of the pastors here in the UCKG. There is a revolt, a revolt that we want to see, my Lord, your people being baptized with your holy presence. Of course, my Lord, we are very glad when someone gives a testimony of the things that they have achieved, my Lord. Because, of course, we see them happy, the people happy, and we're happy for them. But, my Lord, we do not own we do not only want them to receive blessings we want them to receive you my lord so that is our revolt your people need to receive you to have an encounter with you so may your people have this same revolt inside of them it is what i determine by faith it is what i give to them by faith in jesus name say amen if you believe the lord comes to you right now no matter where you are god comes to you in this moment so receive him in your life receive this this invitation that he has given to you the invitation that he wants to live within you and talking about invitation this wednesday tomorrow we will have a bible study that will be very powerful for you my friend that wants to know god more for you that wants to get closer to him so come this Wednesday, we have 11 a.m., 4, 4 p.m., and 10 p.m., the main service. But try to come. The doors are open. Make an effort. Doesn't matter the distance, doesn't matter where you live. Our UCKG here in Macau is open for you. The altar is available. Come, attend. And I don't say this for us to convince you. No, we don't want to convince anyone. What we want to show you is what the Lord wants to give to you. And by your decision, you will come this Wednesday. And by faith, you will be one step closer to receive His promised presence in your life. So this Wednesday at 10 p.m., 
the address of our UCKG here in Macau is written down below. You can take a screenshot of it if you need it. And also, if you have any doubts or questions, you will have the social media of the church also available for you. And remember, all of this is a preparation for what will happen this Sunday. This Sunday at 11 a.m. will be a special Sunday, will be the second Sunday of revolt. And I truly believe that even if this last Sunday was very blessed, this next Sunday will be even more. For you to know more about that, continue to stay connected in the journey of faith. Remember, from Monday to Friday, and if you want, the altar is available for you. The faith continues. So this Wednesday, we will be also at 10 p.m. having a special meeting and seeking the Holy Spirit. Okay? May the Lord bless you all in Jesus' name. And I will see you here tomorrow in the journey of faith. God bless you all.